Good morning from Yami Bay TV. Wishing you all well today. Sending loads of love to you as usual. Joke time, serious time as well. The memory gets better and better by the day. Sending loads of love to you all as usual. Right, clearly seen this morning, Uncle Yami gets his hands on a photo from 30 odd years ago in the category C of Wayland. Right about that time, that's where the murder happened. We, we've seen on other shows that I've spoken about, uh, where someone died over the East, right? George Constantino, one of my big brothers, right? So glad reunions are coming all over the place for me at the moment. I've even got Lenny McLean's um, doorman partner, who I went, who I grew up with, right? I'm going to try and get him because it was my, my brother when I was little, 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 right? So I'm going to get that sorted soon as well. But that photo tells me a million stories because of the, the times that was going, that was happening around about that time where I just came of age and I was the interceptor. That's what they used to call me. I was always on the motorway, um, the M1 in Wayland, in the corridor. When you come out, right, doing my doing all my tricks. Yeah, do you know, we can get a bit of puff. What about a bit of gear? Do you know, oh, no, man, you know. Let me go with the cards with them and I'll come back and I'll do it. So they used to call me the interceptor because anyone that used to come, I used to be first in. George Constantino. So yummy, yeah, like a star. You've got a lot of bottle, but you will get tested soon. I said, don't worry, George. I think I'm ready for it. Anyway, George Constantino, Colin McIntyre, you know, my big, one of my big brothers from back in the day. They was already knocking out everyone with one punch. That's how they, they were living their life. They was already physically... Um, up for that kind of thing but yeah they're, they're around about the same ages it's weird isn't it but I wasn't as grown at that time this is when I'm setting off on the mad 90s right and I started to believe that I could do everyone right but obviously they're looking they're thinking yeah but yeah, I mean, you're still a bit too smaller than everyone else and I don't I never had little man syndrome I don't think it ever crossed my mind I thought that I don't matter about the size and all that. That's how I used to think. Later on down the line, when you meet all the big names and the category A's and the fighters, you think, nah, you're not quite ready. We know about this anyway. That morning, that memory with George Constantino, right? One punch specialist, right? A lot of people fell. Not a bully. Never took the piss out of no one. But this geezer are tall with glasses, right? right? Remember, remind me, I'm all right, you lot. He was watching, he was there at that time. George had his little team around him, but they weren't really sporting physically like that. They were just like, they used to walk around with George. George was strong, you know. That morning, in the night, there was an argument. A tall kid with glasses thinks he can have George, right? So first thing in the morning, the doors open, right? Colin McIntyre's coming around. Tony Rawlins, Spencer, Bobby Park, I think, was around at that time. Um, all right, forget all that. His George has come around and he's got Sammy. I said, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, right? George is walking on the corridor um, to the, the one's landing, right? Because he's secluded Wayland. No screws about them days, right? So he's gone, he's gone underneath. He's gone to the geezers outside his door already. So everyone's there. Um, he went like that. Geezers, no weapons, George. George went like that with his scissors. He had some scissors, right? He goes, no, nah, I don't need no scissors for you. And he threw the scissors on the floor. Right? So remember, George is shorter, but well built, obviously. Um, he's come out to meet him halfway, right? So I'm thinking, this is going to be a row, you know. Um, but George hit him with an uppercut. He got underneath him. His whole head nearly came off. He was knocked out, right? Uh, he said, clean him up and dust him down and da 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 and all that, right? And George just walked off. Another time, another memory is coming back to me. This is how forceful. George was a real, real force, mate. One time, there was a couple of people outside that I sent a VO to where they had to, um, they were bringing up parcels for me during this time, right? Uh, they didn't come. And George, George went on the phone, right? I think he went on home leave, you know? Yeah, I think he did, right, George? If my memory serves me correctly. But George rang him. He said to me, listen, you get up there and you go and see my little brother and you go and bring him that thing, right? Now, He's, when he's come back, he's gone, I told him they're coming. I, mean, I goes, did you tell him? They ain't going to come like that. George, he goes, well, just because you said that. He said, yeah, I mean, they'll be up. A few days later, they were up with about two ounces of puff. I felt kind of bad in a little way. But George was a force to be reckoned with. I can't wait to have my reconciliation there. Um, there's a lot of people that rated and respected George Constantino to the highest level, just like Colin McIntyre, right? But anyway, during that time, 
right? I've moved on, right? So just after that time now, I become that raving nutter. Well, like I told you, I believed I was still idolizing the bigger ones, right? And during this time, Gilbert Winter, first set eyes, second time I set eyes on him. So he would have seen me when I was smaller again, or younger, a little bit younger. He was older than me, right? But a force, a living enforcer. The best way to describe him, with due respect, was he was like a tax man, bad man, right? In that local at this time, um, Pate, right? Um, Starsky, Elton John, right? Jimmy Bish, right? Um, things was happening in the local. I'm in an E-man suit. These days, that time there, I think I tried to take hostages in Orsbury Road. As I came off the sweat box, I, I wanted to come out. I tried to come out the gate. They all rushed me and dumped me, right? I had a plastic comb trying to pretend it was a knife. As I come off, I grabbed someone. Oh, yeah, me. Right? I had a paper suit on as well. Where I was on big charges and I got not guilty for those. I think I've told some of you this. Now, when, when we were in the recess, right? Gilbert's, Gilbert Winter, like, I'm looking, at, I'm looking at him, right? But like I said, I've got my muscles on these days, right? This is like two years after that photo, I think. So right about that time. Starsky, Elton John, I'd already seen him four or five years earlier where he got shot on a robbery. They sprayed him up with bullets, mate, right? Um, I think he got a not guilty. They were screaming with him and always trying to stitch Starsky up. So this second time that I'm seeing Starsky, and remember, he's family to one of my besties of all time, Delroy Matthews, right, the boxer, right? Now, he always looks out for me, so Uncle Starsky. So Starsky turns up again at this time, and he's got more bullets, he's got another bit of work, and he's been shot. He's with Mitchell, right? Rest in peace, my boy, coolly looking, really good stuff. I used to have it with him as well. I like Mitchell, man. I don't know what's happening now. I think his nephew might have messaged me a couple of years ago when they weren't right-minded, but respect to the family there, he was my boy as well. So he's got shot as well. I'm sure it's this time, you know, right? Starsky, we're all in the recess, right? Gilbert Winter, they, 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 they had a, uh, a couple of screws. Um, some, some, there was others there as well, right? They had a couple of off-bent officers who was bringing in parcels, right? Gilbert Winter was knocking on the door to the person that was collecting it, a smaller geezer, knocking on the door and saying, yeah, where's my piece? You know what I mean? Like they did back then. And twice... Pat Tate said to Gilbert Winter, I was in the recess. Jimmy Bish was there. Pat Tate was there. Starsky Elton John was there. And Paul, um, Gilbert Winter was there. And I was, we stop out there. So I'm washing the bowl, right? I'm watching the dynamics, right? Pat says to Gilbert Winter, listen, I've told you, Gilbert, don't go up there and knock on the door. You're bringing it on top, right? I'll sort it for you. Just leave it. Don't rush on that. And Gilbert kind of, uh, no, it's all right, all right, Pat, like that kind of thing, right? Um, Jimmy Bish turned around to Gilbert Winter. I said, so where's my, where's my thing there? Like, where's my piece of the action, Gilbert? Meaning, because half ounce of ash caught around and Gilbert went like that. To me, he looked like Jimmy Bish. He looked more, he, 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 was, a, he was a bad man, Gilbert Winter, right? I don't know how that, all that went with that. And people talk about the Millennium Tone. No, I wasn't there. I don't understand all that. But I know... Gilbert Winter was a ta tax man and he was going in on people, calling other people's names and saying, yeah, they said, I'm to get it and all that. and all, But you weren't declaring facts, right? So he's got that presence there, that old bad man look that I used to look up to way back in the day. But when I looked at Jimmy Bishop, I looked at him. He went on the, he, I could see that Jimmy Bish might have had the edge over you, right? But Starsky Elton John, on the road, on the streets, blah, blah. In jail, kind of different man. Very, very serious man. When he got shot the second time, Elton John, right? He knew they were following him. And he was still going on about, allegedly, right? Right? He was still going, he was deadly, Starsky. Don't play a bow, right? They tried to get rid of him a couple of times, right? Like they did with the other fella. Um, the one from South London, they shot him on a bit of work, which is then you don't know what I'm talking about, right? So Pat Tate was around at that time. And Pat was becoming Pat then. Because you remember, I was with Pat as a little boy. You remember, but we was around about the same age, me and Pat. But he was bigger, he was bigger even when he was 20, 21, Pat. I told you this long time. That time, it's Jimmy Daly, the Daly Bob. Jimmy Daly used to come in singing everywhere. He was a hyperactive character. He was funny, right? Um, Squeaky McCann was there, rest in peace, Uncle Squeaky. 
um, Squeaky was serious stuff, right? He didn't really say too much, but again, certain days, character, they're there. It's the same with everyone else, but he had that look as well. Don't play with me, right? Now, watch this. Now, wow, what was the You messed that up, you idiot. So, that's a, that was the dynamics of that with Gilbert Winter. But I've got more stories coming up on Gilbert Winter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was serious. He was serious. But an enforcer of, you know, the bitches. The, these men were real enforcers. People used to just give I used to see people popping off. I said, I want some of that as well. He used to always say to me, Sonny, I grew you as a little boy. <laughs> he was, I knew when he was really. I said, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Pat Tate used to make me laugh, you know, I swear to God, Pat had all the one-liners, brother, Rambo, you know that, and he's a funny geezer, and he not taking no backward step over no one, man, it's sad when I look at that this morning, but anyway, you have your babbling now, I think I've missed something here, and I, <laughs> oh, God, you know me, stay fit, I'll be up later on, sending loads of love to you, as usual.